and welcome back to Talking Law TV. And we're here with viewer mail. It's been piling up for a few weeks. And these are all about landlords and tenants. And wanted to, uh, we've got more questions than we have time for, so let's try to go as fast as we can. Uh, the first one's from Klaus from Midtown. Klaus, I came to Savannah to go to college. I rented a house and found expenses here to be more than I could afford. Decided to get a couple of roommates to help pay the expenses. Now the landlord wants to raise my rent because more people are living here. I have a lease for seven more months and can't afford to move. Can he do that to me? It seems wrong. We had a deal. Can you Look at the contract. It, they are usually say only two people can live here. Um, and they do that because they don't want ten people living in a two-bedroom apartment. And sometimes college kids will, will do that to help with the money. So that's, that's the first thing is what does your contract say? And if it says, if it has a limit and you're over that limit, then yeah, he can make you leave. And if it didn't I say... I agree completely, and, and I, I don't talk to people about a lease until they fax it or bring it to me. I just won't get into that discussion because the terms of the lease changes everything, so you have to see the lease. So save all the lawyers time by getting the lease out, find it, get it to us. If you want us to answer a question, we will. Okay, next one, Erica from the toll-free line. My apartment complex recently changed owners, and I was sent a bill for a pet deposit for my cat for $500. I've lived here for five years own Clarence, which I guess is the cat, for seven years. He's never caused a problem. My old rental agreement didn't require a deposit. Can they just come in here and make me pay it now? Same answer. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's the contract say? Yeah. What's the lease say? Right. Does for, it require pet deposit? Or what if her old lease didn't have it and new owners bought it? So what, what does she they do? They can't change the lease. Terms. It's a contract. They take subject to the terms of the lease that are in existence. Now, once the lease period ends and it's time for renewal, all bets are off. They can renegotiate it or you can move. So if she was sort of grandfathered into this apartment community with, when didn't have a pet deposit? She gets to live under the terms of her lease until that lease expires, right? Yes, I agree. But like if, if her lease had a clause for a pet deposit and, and the um, owner didn't enforce it, then, then the new owner possibly could okay. if, if that wasn't done at the uh, beginning of the lease. And, and I have seen a lease that just leaves open the possibility that the landlord could demand one in the future if circumstances warranted. So if something changed, but it sounds like what she's saying, there was no change. Okay, next one, Anthony from the west side. I'm a landlord, have two houses I rent out. One has a real good tenant and he doesn't cause any problems. The other is always breaking stuff. Can I tell them to move out if they have a rental contract, um, even if they have a rental contract, for just being hard on my property? Gosh, <laughs> here we go. Look at the lease. Um, a lease will usually have a clause in it that, that gives the uh, landlord the right to inspect the premises, and if waste is being committed or any type of um, damage, then most contracts will give you the right to, to evict. And if, as I recall, the landlord has to give 60 days notice if there's no contract, if it's uh, month to month. The landlord has to give 60 days, the tenant has to give 30 days notice, which a lot of landlords forget it's 60. Okay, next one's from Virginia. I live in a gated community where the homeowners association is out of control. I received a letter telling me I can't park in the street or they'll find me and place a lien against my house if I don't pay the fine. Can they really do that? Maybe. Uh, there's no greater battles among neighbors than with homeowner associations. Uh, they're trying to enforce the agreements that everybody's supposed to live under, and other people say, this is my home, my castle, why can't I do what I want? You bought into a community that has those things, so you have to play by the rules. If it's in the rules, obey them. If you don't like it, sell and move out. Okay. Um, the next Life's one, too short. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one is, my mother died three months ago without a will. There are three kids. I guess we'll sell the house eventually, but one of my sisters was living with mom. She's offered to pay rent to stay there for a year, but wants the rent to come out of her share when the house is sold. That sounds like a bad idea. Can we enter into an agreement like that with her when she's also a landlord? I think you probably could um, to take her inheritance in kind by the rental amount, but for goodness sakes, make sure it is written agreement and in very clear terms and you might want to get a lawyer to help you draw it up so it's just clear because there's no greater squabbles than family members arguing over dead people's stuff. As horrible as that is, that's what they do. So make sure it's in writing and clear so that nobody can quibble over it. Okay. Happens all the time. Yeah. It, and that's why if you've got more than one child, 
be specific in the will because people naturally, especially adults, you, you disagree. One person wants to keep it forever. One child may want to sell it now. But, um, and, you know, really, the only way, in my opinion, to divide something equally is to sell it and split the money. You know, to, to divide personal uh, property um, is a challenge. So it really, really, if you've got more than one child, it's so important to have a will to just keep everybody from fighting because it happens so much. It can destroy a family. Our next one's from Tasha from Savannah left a voicemail and said, Our landlord keeps coming over to check on things, but he always does it when she's not dressed for company, like in her PJs. He says he can check on his property anytime he wants. He's sort of <laughs> freaking me out. Can I move out and not lose my deposit? Well, unless he's coming over at 2 in the afternoon and she's still in her PJs, if it's after evening hours, then absolutely he's doing something that shouldn't be done. Most leases and rental agreements will say the landlord may come inspect the property, as uh, Christy said, but they have to give advance notice. It has to be reasonable times. Simple. And if, and if she's having a problem with that, then she ought to be writing him a certified letter, return receipt requested, telling him to stop. Okay, there you go. Next one, Patsy writes, I rent a trailer off Middle Ground Road and the hot water heater leaked and ruined my carpet. The landlord fixed the hot water heater and cleaned the carpet, but, but I won't clean the carpet, but it still stinks. He said that's all he's going to do. Is there somebody I can report him to for making me breathe stinky air? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I, I think as a general rule, a landlord should keep um, the property safe. And, and in that is clean air. Um, you know, it's a challenge um, in situations like this and getting things repaired and one person thinking it's repaired and one is not. Um, certainly a situation like this, though, if, if the condition is that bad, that may be grounds for the tenant to break the lease. Say, well, the landlord is not in compliance with the lease, therefore I get to break it and move out. Of course, then you've got the inconvenience and expense of moving. But uh, it, I've, I've, I've dealt with a lot of people who just say, he won't repair it. You know, the steps going up to the front door are a hazard, but he won't fix it. What do you do? I mean, you can't put a gun to his head and make him fix it. So sometimes the option is move out and hope to get a better landlord. And what we sometimes see is the landlord will file an eviction, a dispossessory, and then that tenant will complain to uh, the magistrate judge, well, he wouldn't fix this, he wouldn't fix that, so that's why I wasn't paying rent. No, if it's so bad, then you have to move out because it's uninhabitable but you better put them on notice by a certified letter or else you're going to be evicted uh, against your will and still owe the money. Okay, well, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Christy. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. We'll, we're here every Sunday night on WXSAV, and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.